it's exciting to be with you here today. Um, I have been asked to share my family's experience of our transition from public school to home school and the things that we've learned along the way. Though it's only been a year since we've been homeschooling, we have experienced a significant pivotal change in our lives. I've come to understand that our day-to-day -day experiences, though small, have a powerful effect on our lives in shaping and inspiring who we eventually become. As I thought about the change that's happened over the past year in our family, I thought of what school, uh, a school day experience was like a year and a half ago and why it was that I began to consider homeschooling. Our school day looked like this. For some of you, this may sound familiar. Mom, what are we going to have for breakfast? Elena, my seven-year-old daughter, asks. It's 7 a.m. and I roll myself out of bed. We've got plenty of time, an hour and 15 minutes before we, before we need to leave. Gratefully, I notice that she and my nine-year-old son, Hiram, have already gotten dressed for school. Good, I think. Maybe we'll have time for scripture study today. I wake my four-year-old son, Carter, and head down to make breakfast. Breakfast is ready, and I just get started making the lunches when my 18-month-old Addie wakes up. I go back up to get her out of bed, reminding Carter to get dressed, and urge him to refocus on getting dressed rather than the book he's chosen to peruse. How does the spaceship get into outer space, he asks me. I'm sorry, Carter. We need to get ready for the bus. We can talk about it later, I say. I go down to pick, to, pack, to pack the kids' lunches and snacks, but then I remember that Hiram had scouts last night and he didn't have time to finish his homework. I call him to come finish and then also realize that I forgot to check the children's folders from the night before or from the, from the day before. So I asked me to bring, their, bring me their school folders along with any other papers that may have escaped into the bottom of their backpacks. I quickly open the folders and flip through the papers, deciding which ones need to be signed and sent back and taking out the worksheets that have been finished, then signing the folder to let the teacher know that I saw the papers. I, not I notice a few other crumpled papers that have been fished from the bottom of Hiram's backpack, one of which is a permission slip that was due yesterday. Hiram, you have to give me all your papers when you come home from school. I preach to him once again. Addie is fussing to get out of her chair, so I take her out and wash her up. The lunches are half made on the counter, and time is already getting short. I remind Hiram to finish his homework. I try to stay positive, but getting him to finish homework is like pushing a wet spaghetti noodle across the table. Carter is coming down the stairs half-dressed and says, Mom, I need some underwear. I run upstairs to the laundry room and find a pair. Eureka. It's crunch time. I call to Hiram and Elena to put down what they're working on and finish getting their backpacks ready, telling Carter to finish getting dressed. He's frustrated to be rushed along, but pants are optional. It's cold outside. Carter now ha oh, I'm sorry. I'm just getting, his, just getting him ready when I hear, Mom, I need my lunch. I rush downstairs to throw the lunches and snacks together and start helping Addie to put her coat on. Carter now has his clothes on and is headed for his coat. I start helping him get his shoes and coat on, but he wants to do it himself. But there's not time. We need to get to the bus. On the way out the door, I promise Hiram that I'll sign his permission slip in the car. On the way to the bus stop, I'm writing mental notes to myself. I've got to make the lunches the night before. I need to wake up earlier. We've got to leave five minutes early tomorrow. At the bus stop, I give Elena a hug. Hiram is already out the door, so I call to them that I love them and have a good day. On the way home, Addie is fussing, and Carter tells me that he's hungry. A sense of guilt sweeps over me, that the morning was spent rushing my children along rather than having time to connect or read scriptures together. Where did all the time go? It wasn't so bad to have a stressful morning like this. It's just that the mornings be like this became so redundant. The afternoons were much the same. We get home from the bus stop and the rubber meets the road. It's 4.45 and I serve a snack for the kids. This time I remember to check the folders. It's Thursday, so the pile of paper is significantly bigger, times two. I sort the papers and sign the folders, once again proving that I did see the papers. There's papers I need to keep for later and requests for help on the school fundraiser. I set them aside for a less hectic time. Mom, can I go play outside with Jake? Hiram asks. Do you have homework? I ask him back. Mom, I did school all day. Can't I go out and play for a while? I'll finish it after dinner, he promises. I can understand, so I let him go out and play and Elena goes out to play with friends too. 
Patty is fussing for me to pick her up while I work to finish dinner. No doubt she can sense the tornado coming and doesn't want to get left in the dust. Carter asks me a question and I give him an, an answer to appease him and the phone rings. It's my husband. He's calling to let me know he's on his way home and asks how my day was. But it's hard to balance the phone on my shoulder while holding Addie on my hip and trying to wash the vegetables. So I have to let him go. Addie needs a diaper change and the neighbors knock on the door. Elena comes in, in from outside and asks when dinner will be ready. I ask her to help me with Addie so that I can finish. She replies, I just barely started playing. I haven't had very much time. But she goes to help Addie. I rush to finish dinner and my husband walks in the door and asks, how long till dinner? 20 minutes later, dinner's ready. It's later than everyone had hoped. But the, and so the whole evening is pushed back. After dinner, I start on my new plan to have the whole family help clean up dinner so that we can have a more orderly home. But it's not popular. But with a lot of redirection and some nagging, we finish. After we, afterwards, the kids, kids start a wrestling, wrestling match with Dad. But Hiram has homework. He rolls his eyes and slumps his shoulders as I remind him that he needs to go finish. He goes to the office in what seems like slow motion, but he's distracted by the fun in the other room and has to be redirected and sent back. I feel guilty having him go do his homework when really this should be our family time, but he's already got late assignments and I feel like I need to get him to stick to what he needs to do. Soon it's time to get the kids ready for bed and tucked in. The pa it's past bedtime when Hiram finishes his homework and goes to bed. All mental notes of getting lunches ready the night before and waking up early have now dissolved for want of an escape from the day. So my husband and I begin our nightly ritual. We turn on the TV and transform into couch potatoes, watching show after show until we only have enough energy to crawl into bed. Now you may think as you listen to this that there were some inefficiencies in my day, to say the least, and you would be right. Ways that I could have capitalized on, or ways that I could have planned and moments that I could have capitalized to create meaningful experiences. And that's exactly what I thought as I looked at my days and realized how meaningful they had become. And so I'd refocus and set new goals and um, look at the time that I did have with my kids and try to plan in family time and plan in more things that would help us to have meaningful experiences together. And some things did get better, but on the whole I realized that for the most part, it was not something that flowed naturally into our day during the school year. It was almost as if we were trying to fill somebody else's checklist, but on our own time. Now this was coupled with experiences like this, like a parent-teacher conference that I had with Hiram's teacher. Now Hiram was, tef uh, he was tested as gifted in both reading and math, and he got along well with his peers. And it wasn't like he was a distraction in class, but the teacher had some concerns. He had a difficult time transitioning from subject to subject, and there was something else. During the time that he should have been listening to the teacher while she was lecturing, he would try to sneak in reading. He would open up his book, and put it on his lap where the teacher couldn't see it. Now, often he was, he, was creating a, he, he was smart enough to glance up at the teacher to make her think that he was listening, but sometimes he would get so absorbed in his book. Now, this might be concerning, but the book on his lap was his astronomy book that he was passionate about. So it begged the question, what is the eight hours at school and all the fights about homework about? So it was in, in the midst of such a school year when I had an aha moment. It was on a moment, it was on a day after I had dropped the kids off at the bus stop. And I was on my way home and I noticed a middle-aged couple jogging together. And I thought, what I wouldn't give to just be able to go out for a jog with my husband. You see, I was already ready for an escape. But it was not long after that that I realized I only have nine years left before Hiram leaves home. And it's only 17 years before Addie leaves home. Now I recognize that for parents of young children, 17 years may seem like an eternity. 
But on that day, as I looked at it in perspective to the years of my life and the years of their life, I realized how short an amount of time it really was, especially because those years would in a very significant way set the direction for the rest of their lives. And I asked myself, am I okay with where we are? And more importantly, am I okay with where we're headed? So, by contrast, I had been talking to some friends who homeschooled, and I saw what could be. I saw the joy and the family unity, the, individu the individualized education, and the rich educational opportunities that could be. So I began my journey of learning what education could be and have come to realize that we don't have to put family time and rich learning experiences on the altar of school. Rather, learning experiences and family time go much better hand in hand. Now I'll be honest, there are still days that we start off the day with Carter asking where his underwear are because the laundry's not always caught up. And we still have days when we're rushing to get out the door. But let me tell you what else we do have now. I'll describe another day that we had this past year. I was getting breakfast ready and went upstairs. I noticed that Carter was once again half-dressed, perusing a library book. This time, it was about volcanoes. And he said to me as I walked in the room, Mom, look at this explosion. And I said, wow, would you like to learn about volcanoes today? He was absolutely giddy. And he was dressed and downstairs in less than five minutes. So after breakfast, we broke out the books and we read together. And it was interesting. First, Carter had a continuous flow of questions. But Hiram is also fascinated with volcanoes. And he had an abundance of answers. So we built our volcano. The kids set it off time after time. And it was fascinating. They even invited the neighbor kids that were home to come see. And um, they changed it. They built caverns and they, that we had read about in the books. They, they made the tra trajectory different or uh, the direction that it would um, erupt. Now, this, one, this was an experience where the kids gained knowledge. They learned about volcanoes. But what was more important than that was that this was more than an accumulation of knowledge. It was an experience that left a lasting impression on each of my children, especially Carter, because he was ready for that information. He was ready to learn. And he remembered and talked about this experience for days afterwards to strangers in the grocery store, anybody that was willing to listen. He was so excited to share what he had learned. Now, I'd like to share another experience, an experience that I had with my daughter Elena about friendship. This is, these are two different conversations that I had with her. One was on the way home from school one day while she was still in school. She said, Ella is popular. Now she's in second grade and I thought, wow, that's an interesting thing for her to already understand. And I said, what does that mean? And she said, well, it means that a lot of people like her. A lot of kids like her. And I said, oh, why do they like her? Is she, is she really nice? And she said, well, guess so. But she's really good at math. She's really smart. She's like smarter than anyone in the second grade. So a lot of kids want to be her friend. So contrast this story to one that I had with her driving in the car, coming home from a homeschool activity that we had had with other friends. She said, I love playing with Mary. She's kind of like Laura Ingalls. How so, I asked. Well, she has a really good imagination, and she's not afraid to try new things, like Lara. There was a pause, and then she said, I wish Lara was still alive. We'd be best friends. And I said, really? How do you know? And she said, well, Lara's friends with everybody, except for Nellie Olson. <laughs> but even then, she's still nice to Nellie, even when she's rude. Do we still have stressful days? You bet. But they're fewer and farther between. And at the end of the day, or the week, or the month, 
We've gotten somewhere. We've discovered an interest. We've nourished a relationship. We've overcome a weakness or made a connection. At the end of the, the end of the day is no longer a time that I want to escape into a show on TV. But it's a time to recap the day and to think about the sweet and simple experiences that we've had that have helped us to become something. Virginia U. Jensen reiterated this. She said, in that most important of places, our homes, we learn best how it is that out of small things proceedeth that which is great. For life at home is a series of small and simple things that combine to create an eternal family. Thank you.